This is typically in the form of 3.5 inch money. Oh, sorry about that. What's up, guys? Big D Wiz. Oh, schoolsdaria.com. Today, along with High Five Vega. We're here with episode two of 12 Volt Talk. We're going to talk about how we got into car audio and what is old school. And this will be a fun topic, my friends. This is something that may not be in this book, but we're going to talk about it anyway. I am Derek, also known as Big D Wiz, the old school stereo master. And my channel is youtube.com slash Big D Wiz. Do all kind of amplifier dyno tests, all that kind of good stuff. And Mr. Vega and I have put together podcast episodes for you guys. Today is episode number two. And we're excited about bringing you some more content. What do you have to say, Mr. Vega? Who are you? Okay. I'm High Five Vega. Most of you don't know, but you will know, hopefully. I do YouTube videos as well, do a little DIY type of stuff. And uh, yeah, I just have a lot of fun. But today, what the people want to know is how did you get into car audio, Big D? So that's a good question, Mr. Vega. YouTube.com slash high five Vega. I think you forgot to say that. So make, you, make yeah, sure you guys I forgot go the most sub- important part. Go subscribe to his channel. <laughs> so the first question that was pondered by Mr. Vega is what was my first real car audio system? How did I get into car audio? Well, those of you who may have listened to a uh, recent podcast I was on with Everyday Audios, I talked about this. But those of you who didn't, we're going to talk about it tonight for you for the first time. So, my experience was 1987 or 88, I think it was 87. My brother, RX-7, so 1979 RX-7, a little small hatchback. If you guys haven't seen a first generation RX-7, search Google and find it. They're pretty small. It's like a CRX that's sharp. He had six subs in the back, two 12s, two 10s, two 8s, all powered by Rockford Fosgate Punch 150. Alpha Sonic amp on the front, mids and highs. He had two six and a halfs, a five, and a tweeter in the door. And he had the really cool Sony CD player. He had the half den cassette deck, which I've done a video about that. Check my channel, we'll put the link below. I'll show you how that works. It's on a little tray, very slick. And also the XE8 EQ with the jumping little lights. So his car was like a disco on wheels, and it was just the coolest thing, me being. You know, a young kid, I wasn't able to drive yet, but that was awesome. So that just kind of changed me. What about you, Mr. Vega? What what was your first experience? All right. So the first thing that I remember is an old VW. uh, It was a bug. And it had two 18-inch Rockford Fosgates. I don't even remember the series. I don't remember the year. And I want to say it had an LA Sound amp on it. And, you know, I was like, wow. I've never heard of anything like this at a concert anywhere. And and I was like, I, I got to have it. I got to do something like this. So where do they fit those 18-inch subs? Were they, were they actually in the back seat? Did they take up the whole back seat? Yeah, the wall? there was, it was a wall. It's the first wall I ever seen. But it wasn't a wall. It was just a big box sit in there. It wasn't trimmed out or anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, I don't know how you'd fit 18s in the, you know, because those VW Beatles, yeah, you had to and it was, in the Yeah, and it was even angled somewhat like that. It wasn't just a flat. It was kind of like this, because I, I don't know if they could even fit them side by side like this. Probably not. Those cars are pretty yeah. small. <laughs> yeah. So it had a probably, what, 200-watt amp on those 18s, something like that? Yeah, but it sounded more like 10,000 to me. Man, you know, uh, big subs in big boxes had huge efficiency and people could run 200 watt 100 watt amps which nowadays people would laugh at Um, right but you have to remember we didn't have you know subs with two subs capable of doing 150 db like you have today and some people do it with one but you know you were compared to a factory system which was junk back then so um, it didn't take a lot, and I'm not saying that these systems weren't impressive because they they were and they still kind of are. But the yeah. fact that we didn't have a lot to compare it against back then, right? And then you know today it's a little, it's a little uh, everything's just cranked up to eleven. Cranked up to eleven, and the prices today are 
so low that you yeah. can get a 3000 watt amp today for the price of a 200 watt amp, you know, back when we were in car audio and started out. So, so anyway, um, yeah, dollar that was a go ahead. I'm sorry. I said it was a dollar a watt back in the day. Most everybody remembers that at least, um, even more. And you yeah, know, for, the, for the high quality ones, you are look, definitely looking at, you know, two, maybe even $3 a watt, several dollars per watt. That's right. So, um, our first car audio purchase, I'll let you start on that one. What was your first car okay. audio purchase? Okay, I've got notes here because I didn't want to forget anything. I'm bad about that. As noted by me forgetting to mention my channel. Okay. Uh, I, oh, crunch CR tens in a box, a ported box with piezo tweeters. And then I'm just going to jump in to my first system. Cause this was my first system, a 1992 Chevy or Chevy celebrity station wagon. I unhooked the rear hatch door speakers, extended the wires, hooked them up to the crunch tens. That was my first system. Sweetness. <laughs> hey man, it works. It works. Yeah. So how'd that sound? Uh, like today, me, or the day I Back bought it, then, man. Man, that was that was your oh, first was, system. Oh you man, were probably I was feeling it. Super proud of that, won't you? Oh, dude, we took it to the we took it to the lake. We turned the box around. You know, I had as many people as I could fit in that that station wagon, and we just jammed it. You know, <laughs> distortion, it didn't matter. You just turn it up as loud as it'll go. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's good times. So yeah. um so my first car audio purchase and system, I'll I'll do the same as you did. Actually my first so I after the experience with my brother's system and knowing when I was fifteen that I was gonna have a car my parents were letting me drive one of their cars for a while, but they also said I could put a system in it. So, you know, my mind spins and I'm thinking about how can I get money to buy, you know, whatever, all this equipment I want to buy. I had magazines, which you guys know, I collect old school car audio magazines, all of them. But back in the day, super magazine nerd, because we don't, we didn't have the internet back then. You didn't have any way to reference stuff you know to see other systems things like that other than looking at magazines so i would you know dive through the magazines trying to plan out i've got pictures in notebooks and i'm sure you do too uh, about yeah. system layouts and what am i going to do <laughs> and how much is it going to cost to you know right. to put together this system versus that one and will i have enough money so the very first thing i bought was the Sony CDX7520 CD player head unit. I never, I take it back, I had a tape deck that my brother let me use for like a month before I got the Sony, but the Sony was the first purchase. Back in the day, in 1990, this Sony CD player was one of the cheapest, I don't think it was the cheapest, but it was one of the cheapest CD players you could buy for a car, and it was 3 99 no 4.99 retail i got it for 400 so i got it for 3.99 because my brother knew the guy that owned the shop and he gave me a discount and so he I bought two twelves two tens and two eights well that was years ago <laughs> <laughs> but uh so 400 bucks for a cd player head unit now think about that in today's terms of course you can still spend that much or more today but you're getting a lot of features. You know, this is basic CD, FM, AM. It didn't have any aux inputs. It didn't have anything fancy. It was just CD. So, so wait, that was a pullout, right? Too? No, the 7520, the 7520 was um, the fixed unit. The 7560, I think, was the pullout version. So it was the same oh, okay. chassis and all that. It's just different as far as the fixture. So that was 400 bucks. Then had to decide well, what you know what subs and amp am I going to go with, and the same shop that gave me the deal on the Sony had the MTX Blue Thunders. They had just come out, and there had just been a test in car audio and electronics about the best 10-inch subs. You probably remember that one, right? 
best 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 uh, issues were the comparisons and shootouts. I love them. Exactly. So, you guys who who harp on kicker, the kicker competition subs back then were were very good speakers. The MTX were very good. Uh, I don't remember Petra's. There's a few other ones. In it. They all did a great job. It was not like any of them were bad. But the Blue Thunders came out on top, and I talked to the guy, and they were retailed for 120 a piece, and he gave me 60 a piece. So I got two of them for 120 bucks, 10 inch Blue Thunder subs. Nice. So that, you know, we're still talking, you know, $520 already, and 15 year old kid mowing grass all summer, saving every bit of money I can. <laughs> then it was time to get the amp, and the amp. I don't mean to be going on so long here. Hopefully, I'm not dragging this on too much. But okay, You're so I'll good. keep going. Sometimes I'm, I get I'm enraptured here. Okay, so sometimes I get ca get caught up in my stories <laughs> and I keep talking. But uh, yeah, amplifier. It's like, what do you you know? What do you do? Uh, there's so many out here. I was looking for you know, since it's my first amp, I'm looking for something that's kind of budget. But I got two tens, so I wanted them to kind of you know sound pretty good. So the first one I got was a Delta Sonic D360, which was 80 by 4, 80 watts by 4. And I thought, well, I can make that work, you know, 80 watts per sub, and then I'll run the other 80 to the front Perhaps. speakers. Yeah, that didn't work so good. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, you know, back then... The amplifiers they couldn't run two ohms bridge and these were four ohm subs and if i could have done it over i should have got eight ohm subs so i could have run it four ohm bridge because that's what all the amps back in the day wanted was four ohm bridge so the guy was nice enough at the shop to take it back because i think he sold me that amp for like 300 bucks so again we're still wow. counting up the change here it's a lot of money i had to save every christmas i actually skip lunch i don't know how many days rob my my <laughs> Dad would give me money to eat lunch at school, two dollars, two fifty, whatever it was. I would watch people eat lunch and sit over there like, man, that looks good, but I need some stereo equipment. Food ain't important. You know, I, <laughs> let me get you, hit you with a little antidote. Antidote, wherever how you say it. My son does the same thing to buy sneakers nowadays. See, that's hardcore right there. <laughs> that is that is interest. I'll keep talking. You've got somebody behind you that's trying to come in the door, so check her out. I'll um, I'll keep going. So um, so the story is the um, we're, we're continuing with the story with the amplifier. So I got went back to the shop, the guy that gave me the deal on the amplifier, and I was like, you know, this 80 by 4 amp is not really working with my setup. I want to do something different. Well, he said, well, we've got this Alpha Sonic, which is a sister brand of Delta Sonic. You can get the 2100 version which is 100 watts per channel and then I'll give you this Delta Sonic D40 which is a very it was a very small uh, like 18 by 2 RMS amplifier for the front speakers I was like man that's a deal I'll do that so I got the Alpha Sonic 2100 and the Delta Sonic D40 and that was my first setup and again if you go uh, we'll put a link in the description of the YouTube video if you're listening to this on a podcast uh, we'll try to figure out a way to, to put the links in that or put it on our web page, 12vtalk.com, which is still uh, in the works. It may forward to the YouTube channel for right now, but uh, it will eventually have its own website. So yeah, uh, the Alpha Sonic 2100, Delta Sonic D40, all that equipment, you're talking right around a thousand bucks. So... That's a lot for a 15-year-old kid, starving, right. not eating lunches, mowing grasses, finding out <laughs> what I could do from neighbors, washing cars, everything to get in, get equipment. But like you just talked about about your son, when you really want something bad and you're not given everything, you know, whatever you want you can have, right. then it really forces you to uh, sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. And, you know... I kind of still run that old school mindset. You know, my daughter shared a meme with me the other day and it said, uh, how much was your allowance when you're young? And it said me, I was allowed to live there. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you get food, you know, they, their parents fed you and they yeah. had a place for you to, 
to sleep at night and you had to do stuff around the house and that's that's exactly the way it was yeah. for me but it's good it's good to instill good work ethic although this is off topic a little bit i think it's important right. nowadays a lot of people since you have credit cards um a lot of people don't understand the value of money which is a bad thing kids if you're watching this and you're you know running up your credit card bills don't do that Save your money, buy what you want as far as stereo equipment. It'll you'll be much better in the end because if you build up huge amounts of debt, then you'll never yeah. get caught up. So yeah, yeah, don't go on the uh, drop and hurts and do the uh, pay later. Don't do it. <laughs> right, it is very tempting. Oh, I only have to pay fifty nine dollars a month. Don't yeah. do it. It is a bad yeah, road to go. Save your money. You're going to appreciate it much more when you do that. And all this fits in with. Our next topic, which is the old school topic, which we'll get to later. <laughs> That's right. We'll get to it. I'll, let's see. I think we've got. Um, so what, Robert? What was your first real system? And what I mean by that is, you know, one that you maybe have planned out. We talked about your first system, and that set up. But you had to do some more research, and after you played around with some stuff, you put together a, a serious, or maybe not a serious system but you put one together that actually sounded a lot better once you understood more about car audio what what system was that okay so my first the system that i was proud to show off you know i i was proud to show off the first one but i didn't know what i was talking about then and at that point i had done more research so i started off with that clarion tape deck with i don't remember the model number but it had the motorized face on it and I'm wanting to say I bought that second hand, so I paid like 150, 200 for it. And then let me look up. I I've got it down here. I I knew I'd forget if I didn't. Okay. And then also I had Clarion four by six plates because I had an S10. I had an 87 S10 Tahoe. I had them up on top, and I didn't have door speakers at the time. I didn't have money for them. And I also I got a uh, Punch 225-2 second hand the one with the gray with the the uh gold in bells and i had a 12 inch uh rf punch dvc in a custom built box by the shop that i, I uh purchased the sub from and that, that was actually one system that i was i was actually proud to show off you know i had nice bass it sounded good of course i didn't have no mid bass it's just you know highs and lows but highs and lows it must be both yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't that's cool man um so uh going back a little bit when i talked about my first system i didn't talk about the vehicle and this is a funny story too because uh even back then i was close to six foot four but that's what i am now in high school might have been six foot two you know before i graduated so six feet plus so the vehicle that I was given, you know, by my dad to drive was a 78 Ford Courier, which was essentially a Mazda B1800. It's the same exact vehicle. It's just Ford, you know, badge versus Mazda. So any of you who know mini trucks and know this particular truck, it's tiny, okay? Sitting in this thing, it had manual steering, uh, it had it was a four speed manual transmission, but it was tight without subs behind the seat. So my brother was good at building boxes because he worked at stereo shops for a while. So we built, you know, the box for behind the seat. But you know these aren't slim mount subs, although they're not huge magnets either. But the box for the subs was behind the seat. It had to have probably four inches of depth because I think it's maybe three inches for the speaker and man I couldn't slide the seat back my knees were all <laughs> up in my chin trying to drive that manual steering truck it was a struggle so the funny part about the story that I never got to is my dad felt bad for me <laughs> he could see poor poor guy this is not comfortable <laughs> so he was driving the 1982 Nissan Stanza. You remember a uh -oh. Stanza? Yeah, I remember. Okay, so it looked like a Pinto kind of, but ours was a five door. It was a four door with a hatchback. And, ooh, I was drooling about some hatchback. 
because I knew I had a lot yeah. more space. So I called MTX. I said, look, I said, I got this vehicle. I said, I got these MTX Blue Thunder 10s. What kind of box do I need to build, you know, to get some bass? And they said, well, how do you want it to sound? I said, I want some bass. They said, you want lots of bass? I said, yeah. They said, three cubic feet per 10, four inch port, 12 inches long per sub. My God. I said, okay. So my brother again helped me build the box. We separated it in the middle, you know, completely separate. We sealed it up with the caulking. Four inch port, 12 inches long on each side. Oh my God, those tens thumped. They absolutely thumped. All my friends that heard it said, those aren't tens, those are 15s. There's no way those are tens. And this is the same amp? Uh, no. So I moved from the um, Alpha Sonic 2100 to an Orion 280GX, which I realized at the time needed a bridging module to bridge it. So I said, forget that. And I sold both of those and got the uh, Punch 150 for my brother because by that time he had lost interest in car audio. So the original one that he used in that very first system that I heard, he said, I'll sell it to you for 150 bucks under one caveat that you never sell it to anybody except for me if I you know if I want it back. I was like, okay, deal. 150 bucks. <laughs> that was a steal for that amp. I think yeah. he paid 60 for it um, used because the guy blew an internal fuse and didn't know it. So him and my dad opened the amp up and they replaced the fuse and it worked. So anyway, he still made money off the deal. But yeah, so that stanza with the two Blue Thunder 10s, man, I was rocking, rocking high school. I wasn't impressing the women with the car, but I was impressing them with the system. Yeah, it's all about the bass. That's right. Megan Trainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so in my first system, you know, my, my upgrade story for that is I upgraded to a Sony ES4 channel. And I don't remember the model number right off tan. It's a 50 watts by four. Because I was one of those guys, like I had, I had heard about SQ. You know, I was always like, just make it loud. So back in those days, I thought I could just buy something that was SQ geared and I could just make it loud. And then that's SQ to me at, at that time. So I got that <laughs> Sony Sony ES amp and I, I bridged to the sub and I was like, well, okay, this is only about half as loud as it was before, if, if even that much. But I'll tell you what, the difference in sound was actually it was I mean it was like it was like I just flipped the switch up and I was like whoa okay I was like yeah this this is different sweet so you could actually tell the difference between the amps I could I could that's good that's always a a topic that everybody wants to hear is you know in fact the guys asked me that last night can you tell the difference and yeah I said I I can't honestly but I haven't done enough in vehicle testing recently with my yeah. older ears to well, see. Well, I mean, I can't tell on all lamps, but I could tell in these with two those. lamps. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, uh, I, with my blabbering, I didn't talk about my first real system. <clears throat> so, we moved from the uh, 1982 Nissan Stanza, and I finally was able to save up some money and actually took a loan from my dad to help me buy my first car, a 1987 Honda Prelude Si. And Killer. I, I loved it. I actually went, took it to Mako and got it painted because it had, I don't, you guys, if you've ever had a 90s Honda, you know what the clear coat <laughs> separation problem is. Yeah, I had that. So <clears throat> I got yeah. it painted at Mako. They did a great job. But I used those same Blue Thunder 10s in the Prelude. Um, but I'm, I downsized it to a cubic, and a, a cubic feet and a half per sub. And then adjusted the port um, the same way based on the recommendations from MTX. And then I moved from the Punch 150 to a Punch 400X4. So this is around 1995. And I always liked clean installs. I wanted, I really wanted a four or a five channel amp to run everything. Because I didn't want to have multiple amps and have all the wires between them and worry about dressing everything up. So I got this Punch 400X4. It was 
500 bucks. I've still got the receipt. Yeah. Unfortunately, I threw the I tossed the box when I cleaned up a house years ago before I really got back into this stuff. But I've still got the receipts. 499 plus tax, like 525 bucks. And um I had that amp, the the Blue Thunder 10s, and then I got Boston Acoustics Pro 5.4s for the front. And I have been drooling over these mids and highs for the longest time. I was a big Boston Acoustics fan. One of our local shops had them. And to me, they just sounded fantastic. So I got those in the doors. Um, I'm thinking the tweeters were, were up somewhere. I can't remember exactly where I put the tweeters. I think it was anyway. sale pan or tweeters. From the yeah. factory with those preludes? Maybe, maybe it was. Somebody will correct us if yeah. we're wrong, but I can't, I can't exactly recall that. But so the 400X4 was four ohms on the front, and it was bridge mono to the two tens, which was two ohms mono. Which so it got hot. So it got pretty hot, but man, did it yeah. sound good. Man, did it slam. Did it SQ turn the bass down and just listen to those Boston's. I still love those Boston's to this day. Um, and the head unit, head unit is another fun story to tell, but I can blab on too long. I'll try to keep it short. So the Sony 7520 that I bought back in 1990 lasted for warranty is one year. It lasted one year and one day. And the buttons, <laughs> I don't know if you remember those push buttons, they lost their touch and the volume would stop going up and down. I couldn't adjust the settings. So I kicked myself not long after getting that Sony that I didn't get the Alpine 7903 because the Alpine back then was like the Lamborghini, Ferrari, uh, whatever literally. you want to call it. Literally. Literally. The it was the best. As, far as, as yeah. far as head units, you didn't get anything better than an Alpine back then. I mean, Clarion made good stuff too, yeah. but top of the line was Alpine. So, and they were in, they were in, I mean... On this poster back here, they were in Lamborghinis, they were in Ferraris. So. That's right. They were in. They were factory setups in there, and so you pay big money. Yeah. But so what I what I did was I started looking, and I looked in a. <laughs> I live in North Carolina. Something called the Carolina Bargain Trader CBT, and they had <laughs> a uh, section where they sold audio equipment. There was a seventy nine oh three Alpine in there, used, and the guy wanted. 350 something like that 350 bucks well, the new those were 600 dollars. so that was a good yeah. deal used so we drove my dad rode with me because he didn't want me to go by myself but we drove like an hour and a half or something to meet this guy so pull up in this guy's yard and we're like are we at the right place because it was junk everywhere the house was dilapidated I'm like, I don't know. So we're sitting in the driveway, and somebody opens up the front door, and a guy just puts his hands up. I'm like, okay. In the world. And I stuck my head out. I'm like, are you selling? <laughs> a, are you selling the Alpine? And the guy's like, yeah, come on. So we pulled in the driveway, and he comes down the steps, and he's got this Firebird Trans Am. You know, I can't remember exactly what it was, but that Joker was rust bucket funk. I mean, it was the color of rust so we go over to the car and he's he's like it's in here i said okay so i opened the passenger door Bling! it was like a whole different world it was like mtv wow. cribs when they open the front door and they see all the bling dude he had velour everywhere he had uh gold covers over his subwoofers I mean, it was Bling City. I wish I had a digital camera back then and could have taken a picture of this because in my mind, of course, it's probably, my memory is probably exaggerating what it really was. But um, so, you know, opened up the door and sure enough, there's the beautiful Alpine 7903 sitting right there. And I brought a CD that had scratches on it. I said, let's see if it'll play this. So we start playing it and it was some Telarc CD and it played it fine. And he said, no, man. He said, let's hear this. And he put in Lover Boy and played, you know, some real stuff. He said, this is what you need to hear. And it worked fine. And I said, I'll take it. You take 300 bucks. He said, yep, I'll take it. I said, can you take it out for me? He said, I don't know how. <laughs> so I said, let it me go. It wasn't his car. It this, might this, not. 
story of how you received stolen goods. And the story is on the internet now, and the guy from 1992, whenever it was, no, 91, from the Carolina Bargain Trader probably will remember this. But uh, And I actually still have the CD player. But uh, I was able to get out. My dad had Keep some. that for evidence. That's right. The police is coming to get you. Yeah. But um, so I got out my tools and I pulled it out for him. And I'm like, what are you going to do, dude? He's like, well, I'm, I'm going uh, Nakamichi is what he said at the time. Oh, I'm like, you getting the 45Z about, or something? How about you go paint the Kari? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, he was a true audio guy, obviously, because that was his importance. He didn't care what his car looked like. He just wanted to sound good. So that was a right. way long story about that, but it was just too funny <laughs> for everybody not to hear because I enjoy telling it. Um, so let's move right along because I've talked too long and we need to get on to some more stuff. Maybe we'll skip a couple of those. What about your dream gear, Mr. Vega? What is your okay. dream car audio gear? So I, I know I've got this, and it's not – I mean, you're such a big baller, man. You're overshadowing everything I, I wanted or everything I had. Your first system was better than my first real system. Uh, let me see what I had. Okay, most of my dream gear come from Crutchfield Magazines. That, that was basically the Toys R Us catalog for me back in the day. And I wanted the Infinity Uniplane Mids. You remember those? Oh, yeah. Yeah. France, I believe, and they were the, they were just, I dreamed about them every day, and I waited for them to go on clearance, and they never did. I never seen them in, in Crutchfield on clearance. And uh, what else did I? Okay, the Phoenix Gold Outlaw. Local shop had that put up on the, on the wall, and I was like, man, that's killer. I wish I could get that one day. Along with, I'm sure this is everyone else's, the RF-1002, at least people that were shopping uh, when I did, was the big, you know, chromed out. And then I've got one for an example. And the, and the story on this one, I wanted one of these from the very day it was released. And I seen it in that car audio shop. And the local uh, shop owner, he ended up putting this amp that I'm fixing to show you. He had it in a Jetta. And it, and it was a full Sony ES setup. Let me grab this right here. This big beast. Oh, big red. Big red. A five channel. Shout out to Sean for selling me that. But uh yeah, I finally got it and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna run that thing in the suburban at some point, so sweet. We'll see that's, if it lives up to my dreams. That's an awesome amp. That that four channel one I had before I I couldn't believe how good it sounded, and it wasn't just because it was big and because it looked nice. It really did sound good. And, you know, and at, th at that point, I, I had no clue what XES was. I didn't. To me, you know, I had bought the seventy-eight fifty, and I ran that for a long time. And I was like, okay, I seen the explode amp, and I was like, oh, this is the ES though. This is this is different, you know, to to my mind. Which it's probably about the same as the other when you take it apart. And then it wasn't till, I mean, it maybe it not it wasn't until I got back into car audio that I discovered XES and everything that they've done, and they're just you know they're on a whole different level. Yeah, and a whole different um, price level too. <laughs> right, it's big money stuff. Um, so I talk a lot about, and I've I've asked, I've done a frequently asked questions before on my YouTube channel, and kind of talked about my dream amplifier was the rock for fosgate power 1000 terminator like you said it was all chrome with this is the one that had the leds in the end and right. we'll post another video link below so you guys can <laughs> see it if you haven't seen that video um that was just the one that was in the shop you know i was i was in the early 90s um you were more in the kind of mid to later 90s i think when you right. were big into it so we we Separated by just a few years, but you know things changed rapidly back then because there was there were so many dynamics and so many companies coming into car audio because it was so hot back then. So you know, everybody wanted it. So uh, the magazines were huge. The companies were growing really fast. There was a lot of competition, a lot of innovation. Um, but the Power One Thousand was a four-channel, one fifty by four 
at 4 ohms, 250 by 4 at 2 ohms, and it cost $2,695. I'll say that again. $2,695. <laughs> Back in 1990, if you do the the calculation for that it's like fifty five hundred dollars in today's money or something like that just absolutely ridiculous i don't know how anybody could afford it but it was really that's that, a wonder know, any of them sold it really is and i think a lot of them were shop um demo amps because i think they just put them in the car said this is what we can do you get a smaller version but you know it's still cool so i think that's what happened because i can't imagine Many people bought those being that price, you know, even at uh, dealer discounts, they're still very expensive. But um, so that was the unicorn. But the things I really wanted that never could really afford because a lot of my local shops were they were jerks. And I, I like to order everything mail order because when I go into a place and try to talk to people and they they had stuff at list price or more and the area that I was in wasn't a huge car audio area, so we didn't have a lot of competing shops. They all had their own stuff. And like Soundstream, I was big into the reference series Soundstream, like the 604, the 705, uh, those early mid-90s amps, kind of early to mid-90s. And I wanted one of their five channels or one of their four channels, and it had the insert terminals, no Molex plugs, super clean install, you know, they always showed the guts. I was like, man, that looks impressive. That would sound so good. But the shops wanted so much money for them and were just jerk. I didn't, I didn't want to give my money to a shop that I didn't, you know, didn't, wasn't in it with the guys who ran it. So I never got one of those, but those are still cool amps. I think those sound streams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were killer. You had to adjust everything from the top in between the fins and all of that. That's right. It was. It's I never had clean. one until later. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, super clean, and they still look nice today, and they st they sound great. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of my my dream gear back in the so day. What about what about dream speakers? Like not subwoofer speakers. What what did you want, or did you have them in the Boston? The Boston's were the ones I saved up a few years for because I think when I first wanted those, they were the uh, dot two series. And then the Dot Four series came out about the time I had enough money to buy them, and so the way that a lot of that stuff worked is there was a local shop that had them, and I think they were four hundred bucks or four fifty for the components. And online, you know how in the back of the stereo review they had Uncle Bob's and whatever yeah. those names, Stereo Sound, and all these places. Well, one of these places had them listed for two seventy five. Wow! And I was like, man, I can save over a hundred dollars getting them through this place. So I call them up. Of course, they're in Brooklyn or something, New York. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is back in the day when they did uh, CODs. Oh, and, and okay. Guys, that is, that you guys, been a while back. You guys, remember what a COD is? It's called cash on <laughs> delivery. The UPS guy would show up with his hand stuck out. Give me your money. I'll give you your stuff. And uh, so I ordered those Boston speakers through them and never came. So I called the company back and they're like, ah, we don't sell those anymore. So they didn't sell them. <laughs> so luckily I found another place that was like 285 just a little bit more. They were sketchy too, but I actually received them and I had to do the the COD and pay them on demand or on wow. delivery. And I got my Boston's and I still have them today. And I have the original box that they came in. So, wow. um, yeah, I, I lusted after those. I saved up. I, I, I do that now. I save boxes now, but back then I wasn't like, you were ahead of the game. First of all, you were ordering online. Like who did that? I mean, you were, <laughs> well, I say you say online, um, but phone orders. Yeah, like the yeah. phone, the phone line. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. Online meant yeah, yeah. You gotta talk to somebody. Yeah. Different than today's online. Let's get that and, straight. And you saved your boxes. You saved your receipts. Man, I was just like a kid. I just, I mean, I was a kid. I just ripped that stuff open, like chuck it to the side. Like, oh man, there might have been some speaker wires or something in there I needed, but you know, it, it would. I had none of that stuff until I got a little bit older and started doing a little bit of collecting. 
Yeah, I think I got that from my dad because whenever we bought stuff around the house, especially electronics, you know, TV, uh, VCR back then or whatever, he's like, you need to save your boxes for a year because while the stuff's under warranty, if something happens, you want to put it back in the box and send it back. But for me, it was cool to have the box because when I took the speakers out of the the um, the Prelude and when I got a different car, you know, I put them in the box and and in the intermediate time so that way i was able to keep them protected and everything and plus i just thought the boxes looked so cool too that's why i wanted to save them but i didn't have that about your dad because i guess you know that does pass on to your kids you know because my son sees me do that he's seen me do it since he was little now so now you go in his room there's shoe boxes stacked up with his sneakers in them that's how he stores them so yep that's right that's how we learn man learn from the box my my car audio shops locally couldn't be more different than your experience in car audio shops. I mean, I used to just hang out there and I talked to the guys working the counter. Heck, I mean, customers would come in and I was that annoying kid and they were looking at something. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the uh, you haven't seen the Sony uh, ES 7850. It's not as good as the C90, you know, but it's pretty good and you can get it for five hundred dollars less. You know, so I, I was that kid doing that type of stuff. So the guy, the stereo shop owner, didn't ever hire you to, you know, be a sales guy. No, I, and actually, I had pretty good jobs from when I was young, so I couldn't have made enough money to afford the equipment I want wanted working there. You know, I guess yeah. the discount, but yeah, well, it, but I was trying to spend my money on girls too, besides car audio. So I, <laughs> yeah, uh, they're expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, when I was in, and this is a little off topic, but it's, it's related. So when I was in, in high school and, um, I wanted to get a job and all that stuff, there was a local stereo store, kind of like a small version of a Best Buy. And, and you guys may have heard of Ed Kelly's. Did you ever hear of those? I'm no, we didn't sure, have I'm those. Not, I'm not sure how, uh, nationwide they were, but they were in the Southeast here and, they were a new store at the time when I was in high school. They hadn't been around very long in our area, but I, I would go in there occasionally. And, uh, the one time, the one of the installers, which this dude, and I, I hope, I wish we could add in a little picture to show, but you guys remember Ferris Bueller's day off and his friend, uh, what was his friend's name? Oh my gosh. If you wouldn't ask, I, I might've been able to know, but Oh, Cameron. Hold on. Cameron. And wasn't that the dude that got into some trouble later with? It might have been. I don't remember the story, but I can tell yeah. you this yeah, guy that was. this guy that worked there could have been his twin. Although he was a little heavier, a little heavier set. But yeah. I thought it was him. I'm like, is this the guy from Ferris? Bu-? But anyway, so I would go in there a lot, and he was the installer. And they didn't have a sales guy at the time for car audio. And I kept going in there, and I was asking questions, and I was telling him what I was trying to do. He's like. You come in here so much, why don't you get a job? I was like, ooh, that sounds good. So he said, he he talked to his manager, you know, and got me an interview. So I go in there and interview with this dude, and, and we're talking, and he's like, so what do you know about car audio? I'm like, well, I know a lot. I said, I study all this stuff. He said, well, where's you, you know, where, where's your experience? I said, well, I got a big old fat stack of crutch fields and car audio and electronics at home, and I know them, <laughs> you know, front to back. He's like, okay. I said, well, this is a sales job, right? This is not an installation. I'm not having to, you know, do all that, even though I I understand it. I'm just not hands on to that, uh, you know, to that way. And he's like, uh, okay. And we went on, you know, interview and all that stuff. And then I didn't, I wasn't sure. It was like my first interview. I mean, I had jobs before, but not one that. You know, it wasn't something that somebody said, hey, we need somebody to work, and you go after that. This was actually an official yeah. job, my first official interview. And so I never got the call back. I didn't get the job. Um, it was only six months later that that place shut down, so I'm kind of glad I didn't. I did get a job at a furniture store, though, after that, and actually worked there all the way through college and made some really <laughs> good friends. So it, it, things tend sometimes to work out, you know, the way they should, even yeah. though some, sometimes you don't think they would. But, um, yeah, that was my experience. And, again, that was a cool shop. They had Solibaric subs back when uh, nobody else around me had Solibaric subs, and they were awesome. I love those subs. 
So uh, this isn't in our topics, but what kind of equipment was big in your area? Obviously, you know, the big ones like Rockford Fosgate, I imagine. Uh, like, what about the boutique brands? So Phoenix Gold, Soundstream, Orion, all those were big around you? Yeah, so we um, we had one shop called Dashboard Stereo that sold uh, Soundstream. They sold. They didn't sell Phoenix Gold. They sold Linear Power. Um, they sold ADS, I think. They were the preppy store, is what I kind of considered them as, because they had yeah. nice stuff, but they didn't really cater to, you know, the lower end. Of course, they had some cheaper stuff, but then the other shops, yeah. it was either a Rock for Fosgate shop or an Orion shop, but they were all kind of exclusive. I know they like to do that these days too to protect the dealers and I've always had a problem with that because as a consumer, which is what I've always been, I would feel like, you know, if I'm a manufacturer or a company and I want to provide stuff to the end user, sure the dealers are there to be the intermediary, but my responsibility is to make the end user, the person happy, not the dealer. The dealer's responsibility is to do whatever they can do to make the same end user happy. But the fact that, you know, we're big and bad, you're the only place that can get rock for Fosgate, you know, the punch 45, 275 is what it retails for, but we sell it for 299 because they're in such high demand. <laughs> they can't, wow. they can't make them fast enough. I was on a waiting list at one time to get a punch 45 because they couldn't oh get them God. in. It was ridiculous. Crazy. So you know, in, in ours, it was the two, the two big ones. It was Rockford Fosgate versus Orion. We had the Orion shop, the Rockford Fosgate shop. And, you know, I always got along real well with the guys at the Rockford Fosgate shop because they had a few other brands that I like to, to mess with. But then I heard a 225HCCA, and uh, it was one of my buddy's systems that had it. And, man, it, I was like, I, I got to have this amp, man. This amp looks – it's anodized red and just i mean i can see the one behind you it keeps looking right at me and uh so i go to that shop and the dude's a total jerk man i, I mean we get along now because he still lives around local but i mean me and him got into it so many times just over prices over over this and over that but uh i did begrudgingly go orion you know them through them to get Orion, that is right but and they they carried a couple other cool brands like uh they had you know we didn't i didn't know about linear power when when i started out i'd never heard of them they they picked up lunar which, which was a boutique brand that you know i that i love now but i, I wasn't aware of until then yeah so hashtag not sponsored by ryan because everybody thinks i'm in right, ryan's right. pocket but um, you're right, and, and I talked about it before, about dream equipment. Uh, the 225 HCCA for me back in the day was something that I really wanted. Again, we didn't have any local dealers that would actually deal with you. I think these were 599 retail, and I, yeah. I talked to some guys uh, in our in our uh, Facebook groups that bought these back in the day, and they were like, "Oh, I could get them every day for three twenty, three fifty. I was like, "If I could have yeah. got one of these for three twenty or three fifty, I would have got one or bought two back then." But um, and I think we were paying four hundred even here and used, see, you know, one fifty. Yeah, I mean, you're that's great, and I just couldn't get them at that price. But you know, even after all that, and and after all the hype of these, these are still these are great amplifiers and i can see why they sold so many of them because put put two of these in a system and look at the system of uh jason williams yeah pickup truck we'll put that one in the link below he had two of these digital reference 225 hccas running four 15s but only one amp was running the four 15s the other amp was running the mids and highs he had sound stream mids and highs in the front but man, we were, we went to a show in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and he he drew a huge crowd, and they're like, "Oh, what kind of amps you got?" He's like, he, "They're twenty five, they're fifty watts a piece. I got two of them, hundred watts total." Those guys are like, "What?" And they sit in there, and they would be like, 
<laughs> that is insane. That old school yeah. rocks. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Amp Dino shows 350 watts or so uh, at one ohm bridged. We thought it was more back in the day, but these these really can put out some power. And, uh, they, and sound they sound good, good. too. They mm -hmm. sound good, even at low impedance loads. Yeah. And, but, you um, know, Jason Williams, his... He was a tr he had a true mini truck. That's that's a cool system, you know. He had the tweets and the dash, and or it was I don't know if he had speakers or tweets, but the tweeters yeah, were they were in the um, AC vents. That's right, the AC. Yeah, event. go yeah. go back and watch that video because it is it is cool. It's one of my favorites, and it really did it wasn't hard work. A lot of videos just spent hours and hours. This one I just walk around, and he didn't want to be interviewed, unfortunately. And that yeah. if you know Jason. He's not somebody that's ever short on words. So you would think he would talk because I'm like, dude, tell me about your system, what you did, because he built the thing start to finish. I mean, he even tore the truck apart. In fact, the truck's apart right now, and he's working on getting everything back together and re-chroming parts, and he's just he's super busy with the other stuff that he does, but he, he wants to rebuild it. Um, and he's a talented guy. He does you know most of the stuff himself. But uh, I couldn't get him. I was like, I want to hear your story about how you did this. But uh, yeah, maybe just, we need to talk him into getting on here. Yeah, I think we do. I think we do because he's uh, he's he's an interesting guy and got some stories to tell. Well, well, one last thing before we get into our next topic: Did you ever hear of virtual technology subwoofers and enclosures? I don't think so. Okay, man. They. So this was my introduction to high efficiency box building and actually a slot port. Uh, the guy who showed me, I think he had a Mazda truck and he uh, had 200 watt amp. I, th I wanted to say it was, I think it was the punch 125 two. And was he had a bridge at four ohms on that single sub. And he was doing on, of course, audio control mic. He was doing 147 dB for that single 12 in the factory box. Wow. And I mean, it just, it was crazy. So I know some people know about those virtual technologies, but that was one brand. I mean, I'd, I'd like to get a couple, hold of some of the boxes and subs today just to, just to have them. Sweet. Now, <clears throat> what I think, honestly, between you and I, We've been going almost an hour here. We have got a lot of other stuff to talk about in a different topic. I almost think, Rob, that we should hold that to the next episode. Because we, honestly, you and I talking together didn't think that we could go for an hour talking about how we got into car audio. But I think it's been a pretty good discussion. And I think we can yeah. save, let's save the next topic for, for the other. But I, I did have... Um, something else I was going to say, and I just lost my train of thought telling you that we were going to not go to the next topic. Man, what was I going to say? Um, okay, so are we, in, are we closing it out, or you got something else going? Well, we'll talk about upcoming um, We'll okay. talk about upcoming videos and stuff that we're working on and projects we're working on, and uh, also to let everybody know that's watching this or listening to it on a podcast. I'm not sure how you're going to get it delivered, but those who are watching it, uh, just know that uh, we are building these into podcasts, and hopefully within the next couple of episodes, we'll be accepted in iTunes and some other places, so we'll be able to have, have this so you can get on your phone, you can have the, the feed pulled up in Spotify or iTunes or however you get to your podcast, and you'll be able to listen to it on your way to work, because Rob and I are both big podcast fans, and we don't hear a lot of car audio stuff and podcasts and we're like there was a there was a guy who did it a while back and he did great episodes and just stopped yeah. and so rob and i are like well we may not be experts doing this but we'll try so that's what we're going to do yeah. and, and shout out to the sqology guys that are doing their podcast because i do listen to that you know we're, we're kind of starving over here for audio uh car audio centric uh material in the podcast land anyways right so yeah, and any of you guys that are interested in doing something like this, uh, I'd say go do it because more content the better. I think a lot of people, you know, use YouTube as what they want to do and where they want to be. But I mean, not everybody has time to watch videos. But everybody drive or most people drive in a car or 
you know, ride a bus or ride a train or whatever. And during that time, they don't want to really watch a video. They'll probably just listen to stuff. So that's what we're hoping that um, we can grow, you know, organically an audience by listening right. to us blah, 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 blah. Couple big dummies. <laughs> that's right. And we don't know anything about being dummies because we get smart by reading books like this. We got the book. Yeah. This book, as funny as it is, is actually pretty good. So those of you who are getting started, if you just listen to this and getting started, car audio, get car audio for dummies because there's so much good material in here. For those of you who don't know anything, and even those of us who do, there's some stuff in here that you can that you can learn. So instead of trying to figure out everything on a forum or a, not, not forum, Facebook, sorry, Depending on what yeah. year you're listening to this, I don't not sure what your means of receiving information, but I know the way it works right now is you ask on Facebook and you get twenty five thousand different answers depending on what you know company somebody's sponsored by is how they're gonna answer your question. But Rob, so um tell me about some of the stuff you're working on for upcoming videos or you know, something you've recently done you want people to check out. Tell us what you got going uh -huh. on. So I've been doing a few little amp dynos here and there. And, uh, you know, you get a lot of the big stuff and a lot of the old school big stuff. So I'm trying to fill in with the weird stuff, you know, the, the full Tron or the, the kicker that nobody cared about, the IX at the time, which has actually turned out to be a cool amp. Uh, so I'm doing some of them. I got some suds back here. Do another shootout. Uh, last one I, I just done on the Facebook group. This one will be all YouTube. So I've got a lot of suds worked out. I'm working on the video for the box build for it right now. And besides that, uh, I'd like to get some history of, but man, it's so much, it's so hard to find that information that, that, you know, you can't, you can't just get it from anywhere. So uh, outside of that, you know, that, that's about all I've got, all I'm working on. What about you? Cool. Well, um, yeah, Amp Dinos, obviously the, the most recent video I did was an Onkyo home theater receiver. So I try to mix it up a little bit. Um, I enjoy doing things outside of car audio because I'm an audio geek. I enjoy home car, mini amps, you know, everything. But um, something I got coming up that I, I like to do this every now and then. If you If you search on Amazon... Sometimes you come across things that you're like, what? What's this? This brand, which I've Poorly said this, named. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Car audio companies. If you're new, I don't know if you guys have a language barrier or what, but when you come to the market, don't don't use a name like well, Sony did it for years, but Explode or Ignite or Inferno you don't need to use that as the name brand of your amplifier, right? Do you disagree, Robert? Hey, 100%. I mean, you should send that amp when you're done testing it to Doug. There you go. He, he could use that for his explosions. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so yeah, so this amp, uh, it's got 4K written all over it, but it's a R1600, but it says 4,000 watts peak, but it's $75 shipped if you're Amazon Prime. So I got it in. I'm like, whatever. I'm going to try it. So when you open the manual, it says 750 by 1 at 1 ohm. So that's still 10 cents a watt if it does 750 by and 1. RMS. RMS. So, and it's got three 30-amp fuses. That's 90 amps of fusing. If we go by the fuse theory, it's class D. It should do that. So we're going to test that soon. Um, I've been talking about it for a long time about the in-car tests, and I'm I'm trying to get to that. Some of you yes, know I'm that eagerly, I eagerly awaiting over here. We're eagerly awaiting, but you know we got a new hot rod, which we're going to talk about that in a future um, video as well, and show talk about the whole process of trying to buy a car from 2,800 miles away, and the stress and pain that I that I endured to get that vehicle here. Um, but yeah, the Alpine PDX M12. I've had a lot of people ask me about this one since I tested the JL. HD 1200 because these are kind of competing amps even though the Alpine's quite a few hundred dollars cheaper than the JL. 
So um, I want to. And that's it. still not a cheap amp itself, really. I mean, no, this is seven. Was it seven hundred? Something yeah. like that. Seven ninety nine. Pretty expensive. So these these are coming soon, and I'm sure you guys might have seen the PRV here, um, Brazilian. These they call this a mids and high amp now, which is funny. So they don't want you using this for uh, bass. Cause, I wouldn't even want to use it on my sub. Or yeah. Or well, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'll try it, but this one's coming soon too. Got some other things as well, but um, yeah, the the fun part will be showing off the uh, the car, the hot rod, and talk about what it's going to do, and talk about how I bought it. Because to me, you know, car audio, cars, uh, home theater, all this stuff kind of fits together because we we're audio geeks. We may be automotive geeks as well, but right. I'm I'm excited about showing that stuff off. So. I still stand behind you should have used U ship so you could get on that show, that reality show. <laughs> so I will talk about that, Mr. Vega, uh, <laughs> during the episode. And I hope that I won't be as long winded as I've been tonight when I when I've been telling my stories, but I have got enough probably to write not maybe a book, but a good chapter of a book <laughs> about the process of all that. So we're coming to an end of episode two of 12 volt talk. If you go to 12 V talk.com, uh, in the future, or maybe while you're listening to this, cause I don't know when you're listening, we will have, uh, the podcast and stuff listed on that page right now. It forwards to my YouTube channel. We have a SoundCloud, uh, soundcloud.com slash 12 V talk, but we're trying to get everything fed in to iTunes, to Stitcher, to um, Google, Google, to all of them. We want to have it available yeah. everywhere. Depending on, it doesn't matter what phone you have or what service you use. We're working on that. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Vega? Uh, check me out at youtube.com slash high five Vega. Check out Big D, youtube.com slash old school stereo. And. And that's, that's one channel. We have two. The other one's youtube.com slash Big D Wiz. The old school right. stereo, and I don't put much stuff on, so sorry for the confusion. But that's just <laughs> me. I messed up. I, conf I confuse everybody with that. But, uh, yeah. So we didn't get your son to record his outro yet, did we? No, no, no. Okay. Well, I could get him to do it live. It really? Yeah, I think so. Like, just vamp for, like, 30, 45 seconds. Okay. While, while he's walking away to get the outro, um, Mr. Vega talked earlier about Crutchfield. And Crutchfield's in Virginia, which is just north of North Carolina where I'm at. Um, they've been around for a long time, 1974. I still enjoy getting these in the mail and going through the Crutchfields and looking at the pictures. And, man, if I lived in, in Virginia – near Charlottesville, I would do anything I could to work at this place. That would be like the dream job. These guys get to test speakers all day. They get to test amps. And it sounds like Mr. Mini Hi-Fi is in the house. He's hiding. Is he going to give us our outro? All right. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. We're out of here. Oh, come on. Get louder than that. Ready? I thought you were going to do it with me. Ready? One, two, three. Bravo! Perfect. <laughs> See you guys. All right.